Hey Yogi, welcome to class. If you're new to the channel, then hi, I'm Ri and this is Burley, although she's fast asleep right now, not doing any yoga. And if you're returning to the channel, it's great to practice with you again. So this is a wristless class today, so we're not gonna be putting weight uh, onto uh, the wrists. We're not gonna be bearing weight onto the hands just because I'm currently carrying an injury. Um, and so this class is really suitable for anyone, but particularly if you've been doing a lot on the wrists recently, because yoga is so wrist heavy, then this might just be a nice way to switch the focus up and work a little bit more into the shoulders and maybe the lower body too. So for this class, Blocks and straps are not essential. If you know you like to practice with them, then maybe just have them nearby. We may grab one at some point, but um, everything's gonna be doable throughout the practice without the need for any props. So with that being said, come on to the shins and drop the uh, feet to the mat and lower the butt all the way towards the heels. Now, this might not be particularly comfortable. Um, if you're one of those people, then maybe grab a cushion or a block to just pop underneath the butt um, if it's really uncomfortable to sit like this. Placing the palms down into your lap. Drop the shoulder blades back and just together a little bit by sending them down the back body and then close down your eyes. Or just take a really soft gaze. We don't wanna be focusing on anything outwardly just yet. Everything is just inward focus. With the palms, if you're turning them up to the sky, then you might be seeking something, asking the universe to give you something. Um, maybe if you're feeling a bit frazzled and you wanna feel grounded, then just turn the palms down. So whatever you choose, take that now. And we're just gonna settle into our body, settling in onto the mat. Taking some nice long inhales through the nose, engaging ujjayi breath by inhaling, drawing the belly button back, bringing everything in through the nose, slightly contracting the throat. Pausing at the top and then exhaling, creating that nice Darth Vader sound, Ujjayi breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale. And exhale. Blinking the eyes open if they were closed. And then just reaching the arms up alongside the ears, reaching up nice and tall, lift the gaze. Exhale, cactus in the arms. So take the elbows to 90 degrees, take the arms straight out of the shoulders and see if you can just turn the elbows a little bit up to the sky. Backs of the palms facing down. Lowering the chest down. And then taking the arms behind you and swinging all the way up, arms come along to the ears. Lifting the gaze up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Take an inhale, exhale, send the arms behind you, chest to the thighs. Inhale, sweep the arms up alongside the ears, draw the belly button in. Exhale, keep the belly button drawn in. See if you can turn the palms up towards the ceiling anymore. Take an inhale. And exhale, fold over, hands go behind you. Inhale. Reach all the way up. One more time, exhale, cactus the arms. So backs of the palms are going down towards the mat, the elbows are going up. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold towards the earth. Turn the hands behind you, arms go long. Maybe the forehead kisses the mat. And then inhale, 
go reach the arms and exhale release nice just a nice way there to get into the shoulders a little bit cool bring the arms up bend the elbows bring the forearms to touch bring the palms to touch and then inhale reach the elbows up towards the sky look up exhale bring it in inhale bring it up exhale bring it in so you're really squeezing the forearms and the palms together here everything should be shaking exhale inhale exhale inhale hold it here keep squeezing everything in so everything should be working in the arms here and exhale release Whew, give it a bit of a shake out it's always quite a tough one it's also nice to do that with blocks as well but it depends whether or not you're in a position with your hands and wrists to be able to grip right now cool <laughs> and then from here you're going to take the feet uh, sorry the knees as wide as the mat or you can keep the knees together your choice we're going to just come down for a nice gentle child's pose so take in the forearms take in the palms out in front of you let in the chest come down towards the ground send in the butt back to the heels you can have the big toes touching here walking over to the left you might want to take that right hand on top of the left hand and then what will happen is that right um, chest will start to lift try and send it down also try and send the right butt cheek down that's going to want to lift too walking through center come over to the right left palm on top of the right hand this time and send the left chest down forehead down left butt down everything down <laughs> nice feel the stretch along the left side body let's do that again so take the hands all the way over to the right maybe you go for at left maybe you go further this time but really drop down that right chest encouraging the stretch from the right fingertips right the way to the right hip walk through center with the hands and then take it on the other side the left hand can go on top of the right drop the left chest down towards the mat sink the left butt down and then come back into the center nice and then from here bring keep the forearms to the mat um, so we're not taking weight into the wrists here and then bring the knees so that they're roughly underneath um, the hips and then start to take the arms out long and just drop the chest and the head towards the mat. So the closer that the arms are here in towards each other, the more stretch you're gonna feel on the shoulders. So if that doesn't feel good, you're just gonna walk the hands out so that they kind of go to each corner of the mat. You wanna feel like a nice stretch here, but obviously if it just feels like it's too much or maybe it's pinching, then just take the arms a bit wider, that's cool. Just adjust for whatever you need in your body. Keep sending the tailbone high to the sky so you're kind of sticking your, sticking your, your butt, your sit bones up towards the ceiling. If you've got you know, quite a bit of depth, um, then you could lift the head and just drop the chin down. That's just gonna let the chest go a little bit deeper than it was if you had the forehead on the mat. It's probably also going to make me sound really, really weird. <laughs> nice. From here, lift the chest up and stay on two of the forearms and then just bring everything down. So lowering the belly to the mat. I'm just going to wriggle myself back a little bit here. And then find your sphinx pose. So you're gonna have the wrists, uh, sorry, the elbows underneath the shoulders, draw the shoulder blades down the back body and lift the chest here. Nice. And then lower the chest all the way down. Take the hands out into cactus. So the 
arms are going to come directly out of the shoulder socket and the elbow joint will be at 90 degrees. Take an inhale, take an exhale. On your next inhale, lift the chest up, keep the feet, the backs of the feet to the mat. You're just lifting the chest, you're lifting the arms and then lower down. Nice. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Nice. On your next inhale, lift the chest up so the tops of the feet are staying grounded into the earth. And lower. Take a breath. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. On your next inhale, lift up. See if you can bring the shoulder blades towards each other so the elbows are gonna be coming back. And then take the arms forward. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, take it forward. Inhale, bring it back. Shoulders meet. Exhale, shoulders spread. One more. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale. Lower the forearms down to the mat. Nice. Take, come back into that sphinx pose. So find, find something that feels good here. And then making sure that the elbows are directly underneath the shoulders here. Tuck the toes under. Find your forearm plank. So forearm plank, we want to engage the belly, push back into the heels, broad across the collarbones, tucking the tailbone under. So we don't want to be lifting the butter and we don't want to be sinking the hips low. So it's really similar to plank. It's just asking different things of the body. We're here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two. On one, lift the hips nice and high and just walk the feet in a little bit. We're gonna come into our dolphin pose, forearm, downward dog. And this doesn't need to be a very narrow forearm dog. You can have the feet, you know, quite far away from the forearms, that's fine. Just turn the heels out slightly just to release any pressure on the sacrum. Nice. Keep drawing the belly in. Keep letting the head hang heavy. Then walking the feet back out, come back into your forearm plank, holding it here for 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift the hips, walk the feet in a bit. Whew, should feel nice. Maybe walk the feet in a bit more than you were. Really push away into the forearms. So you're pushing the ground away from you. You're really trying to tilt the tailbone up to the sky. Keep breathing. <laughs> if you've lost your ujjayi breath, come back to it now. And then walk the feet back out. We're gonna do one more. <laughs> Coming into forearm plank. I know it's all hurting or it's tired, but we're here for eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, slowly lower down on one. Nice, cool. From here, take the arms out, straight out in front of you. So they'll come off your mat probably, and then create like a karate chop motion. So you're gonna have the, the little fingers down on the floor and the thumbs are gonna be pointing up. Then drop the head to the mat. Take an inhale, take an exhale, 
take an inhale, you're gonna lift the feet up, lift the chest up, lift the arms up. Coming into a variation of locust. And lower, nice. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift up. Holding it here. So imagine you're trying to reach forward and reach back. So rather than thinking about back bend, think about a back activator. So we're working the back muscles, we're strengthening and lengthening them, rather than you're thinking too much about the back bend. I know I'm talking, I'm stalling for time. And lower, Whew. down to the earth. Give the hips a little bit, little bit of a wiggle from side to side. Nice. Cool. A little bit more here. <laughs> so, hands in to karate chop. So, pinky fingers down onto the earth. You can take the forehead to the mat to prepare. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. On your next inhale, lift everything up. Hold it here. We're here for 20, 19, 18, 16, 17, 16, 15, 14. See if you can lift higher with the chest. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Lift higher. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let it go. You can take one side of the head to the mat. Give the hips a shake. Should feel good. Good job. Nice. From here, keep that right arm long and then just roll over onto your back. Wow, it's, the weather here is awful. I hope it is nicer with you. I've just turned around to see the rain. Cool. So from your back position here, just bend the knees in and drop the heels to the earth. We're gonna come into kind of a, like a pulsing, a pulsing Satu Bandhasana bridge pose. So on your inhale, draw the spine. So, so we've got that natural arch, draw the spine into the, into the earth. On your exhale, lift. Inhale, lower and lift. Lower, lift lower squeeze the glutes when you get up relax when you lower and squeeze so we're thinking less about the back bending and more about the lower body working and lower nice from here lift up you might want to shuffle the right left foot in a little bit draw the right knee into the chest reach the right leg high and lower lift Lower, lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, hold it here. And then bend the knee, drop the foot, lift up, switch sides. So draw the left knee into the chest, straighten the left leg. Lower, lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, lower. Lift, hold, keep pushing up, keep lifting the hips, keep straightening the leg as much as you can. Then bend the knee, drop the foot, and lower whew, to the earth. Great job. It's not easy. No one said yoga was easy. <laughs> take the feet as wide as the mat and just take some nice windscreen wiper movements here just to release anything that we might have built up there tension-wise. Good job. Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. <laughs> okay, from here, draw the knees into the chest and just take some rocks and rolls. And when the feet drop, see if you could just lift the butt. So feet come overhead, feet drop, butt lift. Each time, maybe building up a little bit more momentum so that on this one, 
the feet drop and we come up. If you didn't get all the way up on that one, just keep going until you do. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna face this end of the mat to start. Nice. So from here, have the feet roughly underneath the hips. Just gonna warm up a little bit with kind of a, a variation of a chair pose, I guess. So feet roughly underneath the hips. As you inhale, arms go alongside the head. You drop the chest to the thighs. Exhale, fold. The hands can go behind you. Inhale, rebend. Exhale, stand, hands into the center. Okay, so that's the movement. We're gonna do a few of those. So, inhale, lower. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, stand. One. Inhale, lower. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, stand. Two. Inhale, lower. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend. Exhale, stand. Inhale, lower. Exhale, straighten. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Nice, good job. From here, take the feet nice and wide. So we don't want them as wide as we would for, say, a wide leg forward fold because we're coming into goddess. So have the heels turning in, toes turning out. Take the hands into the chest or on the hips. Take an inhale, take an exhale. So we're sending the knees out wide and lowering. What we're not doing is leaning forward. So imagine you've got that back wall behind you and you're just sliding down. You can take the arms out to the side, draw the belly in. Nice. From here, we're gonna to turn to face the top of the mat, lower, come back to goddess. Turn to face the other end, lower, come back. Lower, so you're kind of coming into a funky low lunge, goddess, forward, goddess, back, goddess, low. Sink low here. Straighten the legs, turn the heels out, fold forward. So depending on how much depth you've got here, you could bring the forearms to the earth, that's fine. You could have the hands behind you, but we're not wanting to put weight into the hands or the wrists here. Take the weight across the whole foot of each foot here. So by that, I mean just try not to sink into the heels. It's really tempting in this posture, but we tend to get a better stretch everywhere if we just spread the weight across those feet. Nice. And then from here, come all the way up, turn the feet in, shuffle the feet a little bit. We come back into goddess. From here, we'll turn to one end of the mat, drop the knee down all the way this time, and come back to goddess. Turn to the top of the mat, drop the back knee, back to goddess. If the knee doesn't drop, just send it as low as it'll go. Back to goddess, drop, back to goddess. From here, turn the heels out, the legs go wide, and you can come back into that lovely, Wide leg forward fold. Pada Tanasana, you can have the shoulder, uh, the forearms to the mat. And then come all the way to stand. Good job. Come back to the top whoop, of the mat. Nice. From here, take the weight into that left leg and lift the right foot off the earth. So by this, we've done this in some other of my classes. So if you've got the toes in line, keep them in line and you're just lifting. So you're sucking this bone up into the hip, but you're also standing nice and tall on this left leg. Hands can be into prayer or on the waist. 
So weight into the left leg, send the energy down the leg, drop the shoulders down and lift the leg off. Nice. And then lean forward on your exhale. Only go as low as you can until you feel a rounding of the lower back. So maybe put your hand there to check. Inhale, lift. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, nice, drop the right foot. Bring that left foot off the mat and we'll do the same on this side. So drop the shoulder blades down and for the first one, maybe just go to make sure that you're not rounding into the lower back. Standing, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, making sure you're not rounding into that back. Inhaling. Exhaling and inhaling. Nice. Drop both feet to the mat. I'll face you for this one. It'll be much easier. Cool. So from here, we're going to take kind of similar but different with the movements. So you want the feet nice and wide, probably just a little bit wider than the hips. And then standing onto the left leg, again, sucking everything up here. You can take the hands onto the hips or into the center and then start to raise that right leg to the side take it forward take it to the side take it back take it to the side drop it down bend both knees come down malasana stand up weight into the left foot uh, right foot left leg goes out to the side take it forward to the side take it back to the side Drop the foot down, heels turn in, lower down. Come back up, weight into the left foot, out to the side with the right, take it forward, to the side, take it back, to the side, drop it down, come low. Come to stand, weight into the right foot, lift the left foot off, bring it forward, to the side, take it back, to the side, drop it down, lower down. Come all the way up, this time, see if you can go any higher with the leg, bring it forward, coming out, bring it behind, bring it out, dropping it down, malasana. And then weight into the left, uh, right leg, left leg goes long, bring it forward, to the side, take it back, Drop it down, come all the way down. Malasana. You can take the arms out to the side if that feels good. And this is where a block might come in handy. So if you are malasa nuring, if you are doing malasana with the heels lifted, then for now it might feel good to pop a block underneath you just so that we can really sit tall and encourage the knees to go wide. If you've got the heels to the mat, that's absolutely cool. Don't worry about, about that. You just do what you're doing. So we're gonna be here for a little bit, taking some movement, working into those hips. So you don't need to be static here. You can rock from side to side, transferring weight into one foot or the other or if you're sitting on the block, it's less about weight transference, but more about shifting from one side to the other and letting one knee go a bit wider than the other. So I will show you without the block. So we're gonna come into our nice low malasana and then we're gonna drop the right shin to the earth. So we're gonna keep the arms out. They can either be into prayer or out in front of you, whatever you need. And then bring that knee back up. Drop the left shin down, bring the knee back up. And we're just gonna keep going from side to side, working our way through center, trying to keep the motion fluid. So if you need to use the block, then use the block, that's cool. One more on each side. 
back to center, dropping, and then back into Malasana. Sun's starting to come out now instead of the rain, which is nice. And then drop the butt down to the earth. Nice. From here, we're gonna rock and roll our way back up to standing. So try not to think too much about it. Just come all the way up to stand. Nice, good job. From here, take the weight into the right foot. Bring the left knee up into the chest. And then see if you can take the twist. So you're turning over to the left, hands are in a T position. Coming back to center. Crossing that left leg over right. So you can either cross it once and have, maybe the toes are touching the mat or maybe they're higher, or you can take the double wrap. So left leg over right, arms out in front of you, right arm over left. And then again, take a bend of the elbows, either backs of the hand or a double wrap here. Really stretch across the shoulders, squeeze the inner thighs together, lift the elbows up, Garandasana, and then sink low for your eagle pose. Nice. Keep squeezing everything, your gaze is kind of just through the hands and beyond. And then inhale, unwrap the legs, unwrap the arms. Maybe you need a bit of a shake, that's cool. Weight into the left leg this time. Draw the right knee into the chest. Twisting to the right, hands going out into a T position. Maybe looking over the back hand just to test the balance a bit more. And then drawing everything back to the front. That right leg is gonna cross over the left. You can double wrap or single wrap, whatever you need to do. And then left arm is gonna cross over right, single or double wrap with the arms. Now stand tall on this inhale, squeeze the forearms, squeeze everything in the lower body together. And then as you exhale, let's sink low. So we're not dumping, this is really active, it's really tough. You can feel that lovely broadness across the shoulders, Garandasana, Eagle Pose, and then inhale, release the arms, coming to stand, lovely job, cool, we're going to do that again, adding on, so taking the weight into the right foot, bring the left knee into the chest, take the hands into a T position, looking over that left shoulder. Keep breathing here, keep flexing the left toes, keep drawing the left knee into the chest. Then coming back to the front. This time we'll take tree, so pop that left foot somewhere along this right leg. Um, everyone always says don't put it on the, oh, I shouldn't look at the camera while I'm doing this. Everyone always says don't put the foot on the kneecap. I'm not sure whether that's actually that dangerous, but for now let's just say above or below the knee is cool. And then really square the hips forward. Take the arms up alongside the ears. Maybe you want to open out your lovely tree branches. Re leaving the palms up to the sky. Testing the balance here, lifting the gaze, lifting the chin up. Keep sending the, right, the left knee open, keep pushing the left foot into the right thigh, right thigh into the left foot, and the right big toe into the mat. Lower the shoulders. Vrikshasana, tree pose. And then bring the palms in. Take that knee back into the center. Cross left leg over right, arms in front. Right arm over left. Single or double wrap. Take an inhale, really lift the elbows high. Squeeze everything in, engage. Exhale, sink low. Nice. Your drishti is off ahead, almost through the hands. Keep squeezing. 
keep working. And then inhale, release it all. Drop the left foot down. Nice. Let's do that on the other leg. So right knee comes into the chest. We're gonna turn to face the right, taking the arms into a T, flexing the right toes strongly, looking back over the right shoulder if it's available. And then drawing everything back to face the top of the mat. From here, that left, uh, sorry, right foot, don't know my left and right today, is gonna come in towards the left thigh. So again, you could have it on the calf, you could even um, just have the right toes just hovering on the floor with the right heel going into just above the left ankle. So, you know, whatever is gonna work for you today. Sometimes balance is not always our friend, especially if like everything up here is feeling a bit chaotic, which, you know, it often does. So take whatever you think you can do to get a nice long standing position, really pressing that left big toe into the mat. This left leg and right foot are fighting each other, pushing back on each other to create that lovely solid ground. And we're standing nice and tall. Reach the arms up and overhead. You can lift the drishti, lift the chin if you want, and maybe take the arms out, extending your lovely branches. Feeling any wobbles, trying to resist them, but if you come out of it, that's fine, just come back. If lifting the gaze just feels a little bit too much for the balance, then lower the gaze back to horizontal. Nice, then bring the hands into the center of the chest. Take that right knee into the chest for a moment and then cross right leg over left. Single or double wrap is cool. And then the left arm is crossing over the right. Single or double wrap with the arms is cool. Inhale, lift the elbows nice and high. Draw the belly button back to the spine. Exhale, sink low. Don't worry if you wobble. It's all part of the process. It wouldn't be a challenge if it was just easy to do. So just embrace it. Keep squeezing everything in, engaging the lower body. And then inhale, come up, release the foot, release the hands. Lovely work, good job. From here, we're just gonna do one more adding on again. So weight is going into the right foot, bringing that left knee in to the chest, standing tall, taking the arms out into the T position, twisting to the left. This time we're gonna come back to center, arms up overhead. We're gonna to start to lean the front body forward, taking that left leg behind us. We're gonna come parallel to the mat. You can have a micro bend in that right leg, don't lock out onto it. Drop this left hip down, drop the left toes down. Then bend the right knee, drop the left toes back, come into high lunge. From here, inhale, draw left knee into chest, stand on the leg. Exhale, back to high lunge. Inhale, left knee into the chest, stand on the right leg. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, bring it all the way in. Nice. This time, come into your Brikshasana. So now we've added on a little bit, this right leg's gonna be talking to you. It's talking to me too. <laughs> so really square off the hips here, send the left knee open. So try to keep the hips nice and square so that they're pointing directly out in front. So not letting that left hip veer off and take the right hip with it. Try and keep it all nice and long and straight. Cool. The hands will come up overhead. You can lift the drishti. You can take the arms out, extend your branches.
hands into the center of the chest. Left leg crossing over right, double or single wrap, yogi's choice. Arms out in front, right arm crosses over left, single or double wrap. Inhale, reach the elbows up, exhale, sink low. From here, unwrap the left leg, take the hands out in front, see if you can come into warrior three with this eagle variation. And then bring that left foot back in, cross the left leg back over the right, sink low for a moment, and then come all the way up. Whew, drop the left foot to the mat, I know. I know that right leg is like, what are you doing to me, man? This is crazy, but we're just strengthening it. And if you wobble in and out, that's absolutely cool. We all do that. That's reflective of life. We're not always in balance. This is just me giving you a bit of a pep talk, but also just getting back a bit of the breath. It's so easy to kind of hold our breath in those postures. So keep breathing through them. Let's do it one more time. So weight into the left leg. Send that energy down the left foot. Bring the right knee into the chest. The arms are gonna go out into a T. Looking over the back shoulder if you can. Come back to center. Arms up alongside the ears. Lean the body forward. Find warrior three. Micro bend in the standing leg. The chest is lifted. The gaze is forward. Bend that left knee, drop the right toes behind you. Find high lunge, we're not staying here. Then inhale, knee into chest. Exhale, drop it back. Inhale, knee into chest. Exhale, drop it back, sink low. Inhale, knee into chest. Open up that right knee and take that right foot somewhere on the inside of that left thigh, left calf, maybe down to the ankle. Inhale, reach the arms up, drishti lifts. Oof, this one is challenging my balance, I don't know about you. Take the arms out, extend your lovely branches. Feel rooted like a tree. Your roots are way deeper than what we see on the surface. Tune into that now. Settle in the breath. And coming back into center. Release that right leg, uh, right knee. Bring it into the chest. Cross right leg over left. Double or single wrap. Arms out in front, cross left arm over right, double or single wrap. Reach the elbows high, inhale. Exhale, sink it low. See if you can peel that right leg off. Send the hands out in front. See if you can drop the right toes to the mat, send the right leg behind you, drop the right hip. Then bend the standing leg. Bring that right knee back in. We're just going to come back into eagle for a moment, so sink low. You got this. Inhale, stand, release, let it go, shake it out. Whew. Good job, nice. Take the feet as wide as the mat, the toes are gonna go out, the heels are gonna come in. Hands into prayer. Inhale, exhale, send the knees out. The tailbone's gonna lower down all the way. Come into Malasana. We'll take those drops just once more because why not? This is a lower body class. So take the arms out in front. Be, feel like you've got a bit of lift here in the butt. And then drop one shin, center, the other shin, center, another shin. I don't even know which side we're going, just side to side. 
I've lost control of left and right, but you know what I mean. Side to side. I should have offered the block <laughs> for anyone, so hopefully you saw what we were doing, you grabbed your block. One more on each side. Center, left, center. Drop the butt down to the mat, nice. Chest is long, arms alongside the body in line with the height of the knees. Lean back slightly, lift the feet up, come into Navasana, boat pose. Squeeze the legs together, lift the chest, smile. We're holding it here. And then slowly drop the feet. Cro cro ooh, can't speak. Crouch over the knees. Just let the head hang. Whilst vinyasa classes are often tough when there's a lot of sun salutations or a lot of chaturanga, up dog, down dog. These kind of classes where we're maybe holding postures that little bit longer or we're working on kind of stability, they're often, I think, just as tough. So good job, however you got on with this one. And then releasing your little grip. Take the arms alongside the body and just roll down. Maybe bring the knees in with you and hug the knees in. Maybe rocking from side to side. Might feel nice. From here, bring the back flat to the mat, bring the shoulders flat to the mat as well. Keep the knees bent and then cross the right leg over the left. And then from here, just draw the knees into the chest and see if you can take the knees over to the left. And then grounding the right shoulder to the mat, you can use the left arm just to add a bit of weight. Just crossing the legs over to the left, taking this twist. Letting everything slow back down. And then bringing the legs back into the body, keeping the cross of the legs. We're just gonna roll backwards and forwards and come up. So we are kind of making our way into Gomukhasana without having to rely too much on the hands. So if this is not gonna work for you, you're gonna grab a block and sit under the block. That will help because you'll just lift the hips up. If that still doesn't work for you, then don't worry if the knees don't stack. So we're aiming to get kind of the knees to stack here, but it's not the end of the world if they don't. And then just relax the shoulder blades down the back. The hands can just come onto the thighs. Just gonna get a nice bit of inner hip stretch here. From here, take the arms out in front and see if you could just come up onto the shins. So we're gonna push the hips forward and then we're gonna lower back down. So we're gonna go two more of those. So inhale, come up, push the hips forward and exhale, lower. So this is where if you can't stack the knees, you're not gonna lower all the way, you're just gonna lower a bit. And lower. And then from here, you can release the feet and roll back. That wasn't very graceful of me. And then switch the cross of the legs. So left leg crosses over right. You can single or double cross, that's absolutely fine. 
And then we're going to let the legs go over to the right. You can use the right arm to just add a bit of weight, but really think about just grounding into this left shoulder blade. If it's okay on the neck, looking over to the left. Let those knees just feel heavy here. So you might need to readjust the feet and take them further away from you, that's fine. Feel like you're just wringing out the spine. We haven't done a huge amount of work on twisting today, so it should feel nice just to kind of send it all the other way. And rolling back into the center again. So if you've taken a double wrap of the feet, I should have said this the first time I didn't, hopefully you figured it out, um, release the double wrap. And then just roll up, drop the feet in the right shin to the earth and just see if you can, I mean, I'm wriggling now off my mat, but just see if you can kind of ground the sit bones down. If you can't and the knee is lifted, that's cool. Don't worry, we're just aiming to stack the knees for Gomukhasana. You can let the hands drop into the lap. Just notice how it feels on this side. It might feel different. Nice. And then we're gonna lift and lower three times. So arms out in front, inhale, come up onto that right shin and just send the hips forward. Exhale with control, lower down. Inhale, send it up. Exhale, send it down. I'm wriggling off closer to burly. And then last one, inhale, take it all the way up. And exhale, send it down. And then roll onto the back. There really is no good way to do that. I'm gonna have to wriggle my way like a snake up to the top of the mat. And then pop the feet flat to the mat. We're gonna finish with a lovely bridge pose. So feet grounded, hip distance, tickle in the backs of the heels with the hands for the width. Inhale, flatten the spine. Exhale, lift the hips nice and high. You can take robot arms here if you want to try and wriggle the shoulder blades underneath you, but we're not taking weight into the hands. So you're not going to hold onto the hips and lift. You're going to use the strength of the legs, the glutes to lift the hips high. And slowly lower all the way down. Take your Shavasana. So right leg out, left leg out. The arms are gonna drop down to the earth. Closing down the eyes. Letting all that hard work. And even though there was no vinyasas in traditional sense, it was still it was still hard. We still worked the lower body really hard. A lot of the long holds when we're on one leg, you know, that's really tough. So just feel really good that you put the work in today. Letting all that hard work just find a resting place within your body, somewhere where it's going to settle in, feel good feel strong. And more importantly, just feel really good that you made time today to roll out your mat and take some time for you. The greatest achievement for me, and what I always say to my students is, is not how far you get in the physical asana practice, but it's that you show up to it. If you show up every day, or as often as you can and you're committed, then you will see the body change, get stronger, get longer. 
And for me, it's just whatever happens with the asanas is, is a little bit irrelevant. It's more about that commitment and dedication to just showing up on your mat for you every day. So feel good about that. Start to bring movement back now to the outer bits of the body. Maybe taking the head over to the left and over to the right. Back to the left, back to the right. Both arms up and over the head. Maybe big toes come to touch and stretch out long. And then draw the knees into the chest. Maybe wrapping the forearms around the shins. Maybe rocking from side to side. And then keeping the eyes closed, if you can, come all the way up to a seated position. However you're gonna get there is cool. Take the hands into Anjali Mudra, into the center of the chest. Take an inhale. Open the mouth, sigh it out. Blinking the eyes back open, coming back into your space. Thank you so much for practicing with, with us today, even though Burley didn't do a lot. We hope to see you back here soon. And if you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps us. We'll see you soon, Yogi. Namaste.